I'm here to shed light on these severely misunderstood diseases and ask for your help. I spent 16 years trying to pretend that nothing was wrong. My heart looked like it was swollen and I went, what is this? I couldn't wear any of my clothes because the sleeves were too tight. And he said, you have to get yourself to the hospital right now. It took a very long time for me to get uh, the proper uh, diagnosis and the proper treatment. It's an awful thing that the doctors don't know anything about lymphedema. Lymphedema affects approximately 1 in 1,000 Americans and as many as 250 million people worldwide. Yet it is among the most misunderstood conditions of our time, resulting in a burden to health systems and patients alike. The reason may lie in the fact that the field of medicine has yet to fully understand the lymphatic system itself. When I was diagnosed, I was appalled to learn that over 10 million Americans suffer from these diseases. That's more people than those living with MS, muscular dystrophy, ALS, Parkinson's, and AIDS combined. The lymphatic system is really gaining a lot more attention and we're realizing just how important it is. We've always known the lymphatic system had an important role in our immune system in responding to potential infections. But we thought as far as that fluid, we thought 90% of that fluid that went out into our tissues was reabsorbed directly into the venous side of the capillaries, the blood capillaries. More recently, we have now realized that 100% of the fluid has to be taken up by the lymphatic system. Now all of a sudden, whoa, we have a third tier of the vascular system that's just as important as arteries and veins and that lymphatic system is helping manage all this fluid load. How much fluid are we talking about? We're talking about liters. And this is what is keeping our fluids moving in our body, keeping us healthy, and bathing our cells. People will ask me a lot, you know, what do you do? And I say, I'm a lymphedema therapist. When they hear lymphedema or lymphatic system, people tend to almost think of it like a like a metaphysical aspect to our body. It's almost like an aura. <laughs> um, and I have to say, no, no, this is a real physiological system in our body. <laughs> it's, it's a real thing. It's a system of vessels and nodes. And in the United States, we are behind other countries. And, and our treatment is behind other countries as well because of the lack of insurance coverage. So I've had patients who travel to Germany for work and I tell them, you should see a lymphatic doctor when you're there. Welcome to class, we're going to share my screen. We've met so many people here in the United States that really have no access to care and probably the same lack of treatment and interventions and access to professionals as I've seen in Haiti and Ethiopia. So that is really difficult to accept. So what are the symptoms of developing lymphedema? Puffiness or swelling. Decreased ability to see veins. Collars, rings, watches or bracelets feeling tight even though you haven't gained weight. People often will feel a swelling before it manifests visibly. And so oftentimes people will say they feel like a heaviness or a fullness or a tightness. It's, uh, it sucks. <laughs> your shoes don't fit, your clothes don't fit. Those are all signs. Those are all potential signs that a swelling could manifest. 20 to 40 percent of cancer patients who undergo treatment suffer some level of lymphedema. Breast cancer surgeries and treatments increase your risk of developing lymphedema. With breast cancer procedures, we may want to identify first what are the initial nodes that that cancer might travel to so that we can preserve as much of the lymphatic system as possible because it is so important. And so after having breast procedures, it's really important to identify the signs and symptoms of developing lymphedema and also how to minimize the risk of developing lymphedema. You are at a lifetime risk of lymphedema. And so I like to consider 
those patients who've had any compromise to their lymphatic system. And if you've had radiation or you've had sometimes even just surgery itself, of course if lymph nodes are removed, but you have compromised your lymphatic system and I consider those patients to be at stage zero lymphedema. Coming off of breast cancer, you're dealing with chemotherapy, you're dealing with radiation, you're dealing with, am I gonna live or die? And then now there's something else. It is a chronic progressive condition. You have to watch about any cuts, even the most minor cut can cause a cellulitis. There are potential health risks that go along with lymphedema and some very serious ones. It is potentially life-threatening. One infection that uh, persons with lymphedema are very prone to getting is called cellulitis. And the signs of cellulitis is heat, redness, in particular advancing redness, um, swelling, pain. Um, may or may not have a fever with that, right? Because a fever is a systemic response once your immune system is alerted. So if your immune system is really not getting alerted to the infection, you may not mount an immune response that includes a fever. Very, very important that immediately when you start seeing signs or symptoms of infection in an area that is prone or high risk for lymphedema, that you call your doctor and get antibiotics for that and to do that immediately because it can progress very quickly and you can get very, very ill from it and possibly be hospitalized. I always carry antibiotics with me for this. I mean, even today I do, 28 years later. It can be physically debilitating and um, prevent people from having the quality of life that they wanna have. So this is my pump. You know, I have patients with lymphedema that when they travel, they have to pack entire suitcases full of their lymphedema gear. I got to see firsthand what she has to pack and how she has to really plan around her lymphedema. It is a big part of her life. I've known Teresa for a long time, and she is such a strong woman. She is so athletic. She's one of the patients that I admire so much for not letting her lymphedema get in the way of doing the things that she loves. I uh, grew up in Iowa. I was in the military for 26 years, 20 years active duty, and then about five years in the Guard Reserves. I like to fly. I, I actually am a private pilot. I like to hike, I like to swim, I like to bike, I like to run, I like to fish. I have too many hobbies that I like to do. Uh, October 2014, I was diagnosed with ovarian and endometrial cancer. Um, I was active duty in the Air Force. I was supposed to be going to Korea, had orders to go to Korea, and then things kind of got sidetracked. I, I had some back pain and uh, it just wasn't kind of going away. So he sent me down for a CT. Lo and behold, there was an issue. I had a um, consult with a, with a GYN oncologist, and uh, a week after that, I had surgery. They removed my uterus, my ovaries, my, part of my omentum, um, and some lymph nodes. As I was sitting in the chair, I went up to go to the bathroom, and I discovered the indents in my, in my thigh from the chair. I thought that was kind of weird and uh, told my physical therapist there about the, you know, the indents that I saw, and, and they're like, okay, you have lymphedema. Okay, great, now what? My lymphedema was at stage two. Stage three is elephantitis. Another friend of mine suggested that I go see Leslie. I wish I'd met Leslie a long time ago. She introduced me to the concept of surgery. Sometimes the pain with it, I wanted to cut my leg off, yeah. I was very anxious, and I'm not really an anxious person. I'm a medical person, I understand, especially in surgery, I get it. I know what's gonna happen for the most part. I was just so anxious, you know, is this really the right thing to do? In 2021, Teresa underwent SAPL surgery, suction-assisted protein lipectomy, used in complex and chronic cases of lower extremity lymphedema. Liposuction, it's not like cosmetic liposuction, it's different than that. Um, and he goes in and he takes out all of the solid portion of it. And then a year later, he goes and does the lymph vein anastomosis and lymph node transfer. And so far, I'm very pleased and places it smaller than my good leg. Dr. Granzano has told me that at some point in time, I can do a Olympic distance triathlon without garments. 
That'll be awesome. I have a lot of confidence in the surgeon that she saw and their aftercare approach. I'm excited to see how it changes her life. For some patients, it's, oh, I could have the possibility to wear cute shoes. But for Teresa, it was when she heard that she might be able to do a triathlon without her garment on. That was huge for her. I sort of knew eventually I would get married because I survived cancer twice. I went to college, I went to grad school, I became an artist, I did all these things. I did a career as a flight attendant for 27 years and I said, well, I've done everything there is to do. I can't imagine that I would be just by myself for the remainder of my life in retirement. But I had faith. <laughs> It started out in the um, daylight in the evening at 7, and we uh, went into the moonlight. And that was my intention. That's exactly what the invitation said. Well, my diagnosis was stage 2A infiltrating ductal carcinoma is what they call it. It's breast cancer in the, in the, can in the ducts of the breast. So I was cancer-free for about seven years, and then, of course, taking my annual mammograms, they picked up in the same breast, some microcalcifications. So I had a mastectomy. And then in 2008, 14 years into the diagnosis is when I developed the lymphedema. And um, I'm told that lymphedema can happen anytime from uh, day, day one, I guess, or anytime within the cancer journey. So for me, it happened at year 14. And I don't know what caused it. I can't think of anything that I did wrong, um, but it happened. It doesn't seem so serious, but it can turn into a very life-threatening type of situation if an infection should happen. So they're very careful to ask all the right questions about the appearance of the skin and how the skin feels, and they'll make sure there have been no changes from time to time. I feed them so they can feed me. I started gardening for the very first time during the pandemic. Sometimes I come out here for 15 minutes and it ends up being three hours. We had to stay home. I just felt so blessed to have the time and space to do it. So then I turned it into a whole found object art production because that's what I do. I'm a found object artist. It's another way to use an Afro pick. <laughs> I had it over there bolstering something up. It sustained me for the whole year just to have something to do with my hands and with my time and we literally ate something from the garden every day. I'm becoming more aware of how to keep from polluting my body in any way. Look right at your camera. There yeah, you that, go. That, I'm a strong woman. I always have been. I've been alone for several years now, um, about 12 years now and prefer it that way. And I've always been in upper management at work. And I raised five children, mostly by myself. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. When I went to the surgeon, he told me that uh, if I did a mastectomy, that I would have lymphedema. And I was okay with that because I, at my age, I felt like it would be better to just go ahead and do the mastectomy rather than a lumpectomy. The tumor that I had was not benign, but it had not spread to any other areas. And though they did take out 26 lymph nodes, they were all had clear margins. So it was good. But I did have lymphedema within 48 hours of the surgery. I'm not the same person that I was before surgery, I will tell you that. I have a little bit of swelling in my arm. You can see maybe a little bit in my right arm but for the most part, it's in my trunk. And when I get up in the mornings, everything is perfectly flat here. The later it gets in the day, the more swelling I get. You have to understand that this is not something you're just gonna do for a few weeks or a few months. This is something you have to do every day for the rest of your life. My name is Joanne Edelstein, and I am a 29 year survivor of breast cancer. I hadn't been to a doctor in 15 years, and I said, it's time to go back and get this checked just to see. And she goes, the garment you're wearing 
She goes, throw it out right now. Just put it in the trash in my office. And she says, we're going to remeasure you. And she said, you need to wear a garment. It's not going to be cheap, but you're going to have to get it. And you're going to have to wear it every single day. And you're going to have to wear it the rest of your life. And then I started to cry. I think when patients get lymphedema, they now feel like they have a full-time job just caring for their lymphedema. I was wearing this in the ladies' room and um, at the sink, and a woman comes up to me and she said, lymphedema? And I said, yes. I said, how do you know? She said, because she said, I also have it. She said, but I am wearing a garment from my ankles to my chest. I said, well, I guess I shouldn't complain so much about my little arm sleeve and my glove. And I said, how you doing? She goes, I'm doing okay. She goes, not easy, but I'm doing okay. So I think the glove that I wear, a lot of people looked at it, and I think there's almost kind of like a knot between people. It's like, yeah, lymphedema. Some people I see, you know, they really swelled up a lot. I, I was fortunate that I didn't. There are things that I can no longer do that I really miss, but at the end of the day, I always go back to, I'm alive. And it's a reminder that I had breast cancer. That's what it really is. I saw my GP and my GP sent me to a specialist. The specialist said, yes, you have lymphedema. It's going to get worse as you get older. Um, there's nothing you can do about it. And you have to wear these stockings. That'll be $275. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I walked out of that appointment quite cranky, actually. <laughs> I didn't want lymphedema. I got on a mission to find what it actually could be because I didn't believe him. So I spent the next four years looking for anything else that it could be. And during that time, I developed two cases of cellulitis, one case which developed into sepsis. I sought out a second opinion um, from another specialist in Sydney who confirmed that, yes, I did have lymphedema. Once I came to terms with the diagnosis, which took a while, to be fair, I was quite upset about it. I became a woman on a mission again to see what I could do to help myself. So the last six years have been very much managing my lymphedema with variations on diet, uh, compression and exercise. It's just a, a spandex um, shell and that's all it is. And I do sometimes wear the sleeves as well. I'm told by the doctor to wear my sleeve, uh, especially on flights. I'm supposed to wear it all day, every day, anyhow, and then I have a night garment as well, but particularly on flights because of the pressure. So you gotta pull and pull. Sometimes I punch myself in the face and it goes like that. So you pull this up right up to under my arm. That's part one. Part two is my glove. And this is all very tight. It's very sexy. My brother, he said, is that a new fashion statement you're wearing? I said, no. He said, this is my lymphedema glove. You just sleeve yourself through there and it's got these little Velcro closures and you, you sort of put yourself in there and you tighten it up with these Velcro straps, your arm is like this for the whole night. <laughs> I have thrown away their garments in my office. I mean, I've seen garments come in with holes and, I mean, runs. I mean, they're falling apart and replacing garments is very important. Keeps the arm from swelling and and it's got another cover that goes on top of that to make it more pretty. Who's gonna be looking when you're sleeping, right? But uh, it's, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world and it's very expensive. This one was about $330 because it's um, 
custom made. It's custom made, so they do they measure you nine ways from Sunday, and then it takes about six weeks to have this made, and then they send it to you, and um, and it's got all these little attachments. You can extend it this way, that way, and it I don't use this and it's got a little measuring tool so you can see if it's too tight it has to be between this level and that level and it's quite a little production before going to bed but <laughs> but it's useful and it's um i'm glad i have it because i would have had to do the triple bandaging when i say triple i mean one for here to there and then another one from here to there and then a third one from here up because there's no way to do one long bandage you'd be here for a week so i use the triple bandage or the night garment. I do not advise patients to get an over-the-counter garment or a non-medical compression garment like you would get at a local pharmacy store because you run that risk of potentially causing more damage than good. Do you have your custom garments here today? Compression should never be painful. The most effective garment is the one that somebody can wear. When you're in the right compression, it actually feels relieving to people. So these are foam-filled garments. Foam is like magic in the treatment of lymphedema. Okay. And this is in the class of what we call like the nighttime garments. People will also use these on plane travel. It's stitched with channels to direct the fluid away from um, the area where there's lymphatic compromise. What I always do with patients is I like to explain the fluid balance in our system, how the fluid gets there, how the fluid's taken away, so that they can have an understanding of what contributes to problems with the lymphatic system. And then I tell patients all the risk factors. Let them know that they are at a lifetime risk. It's not to scare people but it is really just to educate them, especially when these conditions are addressed early on, then they don't get bad. They don't get like the scary pictures you see online. The hardest thing is when people don't know what's happening and it gets really severe, and then we have to try to address that. So we've got our little rebounder. Our blood has a pump, so this is a good way to pump the lymphatics all throughout the body and clean that system and help keep the swelling down a little bit. I have a rebounder, like a little mini trampoline, and I jump on it and that is supposed to help distribute lymphatic fluid throughout the body and it forces the lymph to move. So that I do on my own and that helps Anyway, it helps the entire body. It's good for my muscle tone, it's good for my heart, it's, it's like a little cardio, and it also moves lymph, not just from the arm, but throughout the whole body. It is really important to stay moving. That helps the lymphatic flow. Anything that you do that triggers an inflammatory response could potentially add to the burden of what the lymphatic system is already trying to manage. So anything that would increase the fluid going into the tissues. That may include a bug bite, overexertion, trauma, injury to that extremity. Avoid extremes of heat or cold, sunburn, cooking burn, cuts, abrasions. Also understand that that can compound on itself, right? If you're doing multiple things that are taxing the lymphatic system or potentially causing risk. A lot of people need help with the application of the change of diet. I practice nutritional medicine and I also run a free Facebook group and we provide support and general information for people with lymphedema and lipedema and lipolymphedema who want to use and um, experiment with using a ketogenic diet. A ketogenic diet is where the body produces ketones because of changes that you make with your food intake. Being in a state of ketosis, when your liver is producing some nice ketones for you, because they assist in interrupting that inflammation cycle. What we want to do is interrupt the cycle of inflammation and downregulate it to what's normal. Losing the weight and being on keto also made a big difference in my lymphedema. There is swelling whenever I eat things that are 
high in carbohydrates. Anything that's high in sugar, I can tell that it's, it causes swelling. It may not cause it right away, but I will feel it the next day. I have since developed a relationship with a massage therapist, and he did a manual lymphatic drainage. That made a huge difference. I could, as he was working on me, I could actually feel the lymph fluid starting to flow. Manual lymphatic drainage is a very gentle massage technique that is done within the skin layer. And what we're doing is we are trying to stimulate the stretch receptors, which in turn stimulate the lymphatic vessels to open their pores and pick up more lymph fluid and then it stimulates them also to pump at a faster rate. If I can see veins, I know I'm good. Um, but when my hand gets puffy like, and, and I get the little baby dimples here, then I know that something is, is up and I need to stop, relax, lie down and do a whole drainage uh, from the whole body. Um, they taught us how to do, how to open the channels in the groin and the underarms and the clavicle and then manually push that fluid back. Another modality that might be useful in managing lymphedema and long-term management are lymphedema pumps. And there are a lot of differences in pumps as well, just like compression garments. Some pumps have many, many chambers. Some of them have what's called central decongestion that mimics what we do with manual lymphatic drainage. So it might help drain lymph centrally before it moves on to the extremity. Um, so there's a lot of different varieties and those can be helpful as well as all the standard conservative treatments to manage lymphedema long-term. And in many cases, they are covered by insurance. Uh, we need to keep fighting for all these therapies to be covered and having access to care. I'm all about using the specialists that we have to better address the complications that come from lymphedema. Physicians receive only 15 to 30 minutes on the entire lymphatic system throughout their medical training. This leaves them seriously ill-prepared to diagnose the disease. You are not actually qualified to treat somebody with lymphedema unless you are fully certified. Having done the course, there is a reason for that. I was so blown away by the amount of information that I got in that course and how much there was to know about the lymphatic system. I know that a lot of massage therapists or our physical therapists or you know chiropractors, you know, we might know the technique, but I would caution people who've actually had compromised their lymphatic system to see somebody who is fully certified. I used to do a measurement with a tape in the beginning and write down the measurements to see if it was physically swelling but I can just tell right now how how it's looking how it should look how it feels how it should feel and so you, you sort of incorporate it into your life and you, you know arm yourself with a lot of information uh, from various sources talk to people who've been there before don't rely solely on the internet because not everything <laughs> is accurate being a cancer survivor, you learn to just deal with whatever comes at you and, and say, okay, there's one more thing, <laughs> but you deal with it. Now, I'm not afraid to ask a question. I'm not afraid to question their decisions, and I just ask away. It's okay for patients to be educators. I've been a lymphedema specialist for 17 years, and I learn things from patients every day. I've come a long way since then, and some of the doctors, I think, have come a long way since then. I would just straight up ask my doctor, do you do surgery in a way to help protect me from developing lymphedema? And to practitioners, I would always like to emphasize to listen to the patients, because if they are experiencing some symptoms, and just because maybe you don't see it yet, doesn't mean they don't have it. These are the sentinel lymph nodes. We have developed a program now that can be accessed from anywhere in the world. Well, we're going to use this type of bandage for lymphedema treatment. Fortunately now with social media there are a lot of support groups online so it's really great to hear other people's stories, realize you're not the only one. Today there is no cure in sight, there is no approved drug therapy and there are only three studies worldwide seeking new treatments.
We have celebrities like Kathy Bates speaking out on behalf of lymphatic research and funding. We appreciate the testimony and look forward to working with you and trying to make meaningful Thank progress. Thank you so much. It's not me. It's for everyone. We have a long way to go, but there are a lot of resources. Just need to seek those out and find them. It impacts their life. We want to minimize that as much as possible.